Magic is creating the illusion that you can defy the laws of nature. of nature. Science is the study of how the natural world works. This is science. Yeah! Raindrops, raindrops, raindrops. Oh, hi there. Have you ever walked around in the rain? Have you ever sipped on crocodile tears? Or taken a shower in dinosaur spit? No? Well, think again. Come with me while we explore the water on our amazing planet Earth. Earth is known as the water planet. Almost three-fourths of our planet is covered in water. Earth is the only planet in our solar system with water on its surface. Scientists suspect that other planets and their moons may have water under their surfaces. For today, we're going to stay here on Earth. Home sweet home. All the water on our planet has a name. Is it Janet? Fred? Sylvia? Gertrude? No, it's hydrosphere. Scientists calculate that the hydrosphere has been a part of our planet since it was a little bitty baby and will be here as long as Earth hangs around. During this four and a half billion years or so, our hydrosphere has likely changed very little. All the water that is here on Earth today is the same water that has been here for over four billion years. And it is the same water that will be around as long as Earth exists. I'll bet you've heard of the water cycle. Condensation, precipitation, evaporation. Condensation, precipitation, evaporation. Do you see the pattern? During condensation, water molecules rise and then clump together to form clouds. Why? When the molecules get cooler up in the sky, their energy slows down and they get closer together. Just like the water drops that form on the outside of a cold drink. That's condensation. Eventually, those clumps get heavy and fall to the ground as precipitation. The rain forms puddles or joins lakes or oceans or seeps into the ground. Water on Earth's surface evaporates and rises into the atmosphere. Why? The sun warms up the water molecules, which gives them energy. They spread apart and become less dense and rise up, 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 and away. Those evaporated water molecules condense in the air to form clouds. And this happens over and over and over again. The cycle just goes on and 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 on again. Water is a really fascinating substance because it can exist as a solid, liquid, and gas. Gas? These are called states of matter. This is all three states of matter in the same place at the same time. Over time, 
water never really goes away. It just changes its state of matter. That's what we mean by cycle. Because of the water cycle, one molecule of water could be drunk by a dinosaur, leave the dinosaur body through its breath, through the atmosphere in a giant cloud, rain down and seep into the ground, and eventually end up in your ice cubes. That same water you just got out of your kitchen faucet may be some of the same water that George Washington brushed his teeth with. Let's talk about the water that is with us today, specifically the fresh water. Oh, yeah. Let's begin by locating fresh water. Boink, boink, boink. Is fresh water here in the oceans? No, because that's salt water. You and I can drink fresh water. We can't drink salty ocean water. Some of Earth's fresh water is in your body. Huh? That's right. You are part of the hydrosphere. Your body is made up of about 71% of water, very much like the Earth. You have water in your brain, your lungs, your skin, even your bones. Fresh water is necessary for us to live. In fact, every living thing needs water. Every living thing is made of cells, and every living cell contains water. Hmm. Where else can we find fresh water besides in living things? Boink, boink, boink. Fresh water is found in rivers, ponds, streams, wetlands, aquifers, glaciers, lakes, and groundwater. That sounds like a lot of water, right? But of all the water on Earth, Fresh water makes up only about 3%. Huh? If this beaker held all of the water on Earth, this much this much would be the fresh water. Not only that, but most of the fresh water on our planet is actually frozen. About 60% of our fresh water is locked up in ice. This is the water that is locked up in ice. Most of it is in glaciers. This is the remaining non-frozen fresh water on Earth. Let's talk about glaciers. A glacier is a huge chunk of frozen water, ice, snow, rocks, and sediment that moves slowly down a slope due to its own weight. Glaciers don't usually melt away, but when seasons change, some of its water melts. This provides streams that are necessary for lots of wildlife. Hmm, what would happen if all of our glaciers melted? Every coastal city on the planet would flood. We need our glaciers not only for the streams they create, but for their ability to regulate climate. Continuous trickle of their waters into our oceans contributes to ocean currents, which affect climate. And glaciers reflect sunlight, which helps keep our planet's temperature at the sweet spot for living things here on Earth. Not too hot, not too cold. Papa bear, Papa bear, this planet is just right. Compared to all of the water on Earth, our available fresh water is not much more than a drop. And where is this available fresh water located? Most of the water that is not frozen is stored deep underground. If you dig a well, you might tap into the water table. Dig deeper and you get to the groundwater. So the water there is stored in huge porous rocks called aquifers. Aquifers are huge, rocky, underground reservoirs of water. Rocks may not look like sponges, but believe it or not, rocks are porous. That means they can hold water. Aquifers are our largest source of drinking water. Not only that, but their water is pure and clean. Aquifers act as giant filters. Thanks to aquifers, groundwater is usually potable. Potable means safe to drink. Oh, yeah. Sadly, if we're not careful, even the water in aquifers can become polluted. They can become contaminated by human-made things like landfills, fertilizers, and chemicals. So don't go around drinking any old water you find in the ground. Let's review 
what we have learned. Fresh water makes up only 3% of our Earth's water. Glaciers contain most of our fresh water, which is trapped in ice. Aquifers hold most of the unfrozen fresh water on Earth. That means that all of the fresh water we see in rivers, lakes, ponds, streams, and swamps is only a teeny tiny bit of the fresh water on Earth. Looks can be deceiving. With so little fresh water on the planet, and the fact that every living thing needs fresh water to live, it sure seems like taking good care of our water should be important. How can we help the health of our hydrosphere? To keep our water clean, be careful about how you throw things away. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Never throw away batteries. Recycle them. Think about what you do with your trash. Don't litter. Pick up litter when you see it. And make sure all of your trash is properly disposed of. That way, trash won't end up in our fresh water. We can all use less plastic. Those plastic straws and plastic water bottles, well, they break down into microplastics, and those can end up in our water. Choose paper over plastic. If you do use plastic, be sure to put it in a recycle bin when you're finished with it. Even though you may live in a place where clean drinking water flows right out of your faucet, over a billion people on our planet do not have access to clean drinking water. It's important that we do not waste our fresh water. You can conserve water by taking shorter showers or turning the water off when you're not using it. Hmm, how many ways can you think of to use less water? It all comes down to the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Practicing the three R's will help our hydrosphere, our hydrosphere, which helps all living things. Whether you're swimming in a lake, drinking a nice cold glass of ice water, or, or sitting near a camel in a hot and dry barren desert, you are connected to the hydrosphere by the cells in your body, the air around you, and even the water underground. So, next time raindrops fall on your head, remember that every molecule of that water has made an incredible journey. And that journey continues as long as our amazing Earth exists.